welcome to the next video on our series on climate scenario modelling. My name is Richard and I'm a senior investment analyst at Barnet Waddingham and I also work within the sustainable investment team. Within this video, what I'm going to focus on is the reason we've chosen to use the Bank of England data as the basis to form our climate scenario modelling and what using that data means for the wider context of scenario modelling. So, why have we chosen the Bank of England as the basis for our climate scenario modelling? And actually, before I answer that question, I thought it'd be useful just to give a brief overview of our approach at Barnet Wadium to climate scenario analysis. We base this on, on three pillars, the climate risk impact score, the climate opportunity score and our climate scenario analysis. We were producing three videos on each of these topics separately, so please keep an eye out for them. The climate risk impact score looks at the risk or the exposure of the asset class or fund to climate risk. And we then produce a score on a scale of zero to nine to hopefully illustrate where we think that fund sits in terms of its exposure to climate risk. But we think it's also important to highlight that there are opportunities to be gained in the move transition to a net zero world and economy. Because ultimately, while there are clearly risks associated with climate change, we think it is important to highlight there are also opportunities. And clearly, different asset classes and investment strategies have varying degrees of their ability to take advantage of this net zero transition. And then arguably, the pillar that underpins our wider work is our climate scenario analysis. And I'm now going to talk about the data that underpins this pillar, but, but please keep an eye out for Jordan's video, which goes into more detail on this pillar. Why the Bank of England modelling? Well, one of the key reasons we think the Bank of England model is a good place to start is that it's exploratory. And what I mean by that is that climate scenario modelling in general is still very much in its infancy. So there is a lot of data with a lot of different aspects to consider and explore. So within an exploratory analysis, you're going through this myriad of data and trying to summarise it into a useful output for further investigation. Another of the key reasons we think the Bank of England data was a good starting point is that it's publicly available. So that means that the underlying assumptions and models that we are using can be publicly scrutinised. And we think that a transparent approach to modelling is very important, especially at this early stage of scenario modelling, where everything is still very much in its infancy and there are a lot of issues to still be worked through within the modelling process. Now, the Bank of England modelling is also based on the NGFS scenarios, or the Network for Greening the Financial System scenarios. And two of the key aspects or risks that these scenarios look at are physical risk and transitional risk, and where the different scenarios fit in terms of higher and lower exposure to these risks, which I'll touch on in a bit more detail in a second. And ultimately, what we wanted from our modelling and one of the primary reasons for using the Bank of England data is that we wanted to produce actionable results for trustees and for pension schemes to use within their TCFD reporting. So on the bottom right of this slide, I've shown a brief extract of where a fund might sit on our zero to nine climate risk impact score, because we think this illustrates where there is potential action to be taken to reduce climate risk, should they wish to, and ultimately produce actionable results and discussions that can be had around the investment portfolio. So by looking at the Bank of England modelling, we're going to look at four key scenarios. And I'm actually going to group these scenarios into the first three on the screen, and then the I'm going to touch on the far too little, too late separately at the end. So within the early action, late action, and no additional action, the data looks at the difference in transitional and physical risks and how this could impact the asset class and funds under these different scenarios. Transitional risk can be thought of as the risk to an asset class or a fund in the transition to a net zero world. And a good proxy for looking at transition risk is the, the transition to net zero, as this will likely require a carbon tax. Because ultimately, to be able to transition to a net zero world, there is going to have to be a cost associated with high emitting activities to try and discourage these activities. And a good proxy for this is carbon tax. So 
Under the early action scenario, this assumes that there is an early move towards introducing a carbon tax of roughly $900 per tonne of emissions, and that that helps to limit emissions so that a net zero is achieved by 2050. And so this limits the impact of warming by the end of the century to 1.6 degrees. By way of context, the general scientific consensus is that warming has to be limited to below two degrees above pre-industrial levels or preferably below 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels to limit the worst impacts of climate change, which is achieved by reaching net zero by 2050. Under a late action scenario, this assumes that net zero is still reached by 2050 and so physical risk and warming is largely still limited by the end of the century. However, this is achieved in a much more disorderly way. That is that the action to imp implement this carbon tax isn't taken immediately and instead delayed. So you end up with a disorderly transition. And so a higher carbon tax is then required to reach net zero under this shorter time frame. And then lastly, under what I'll call the three core scenarios of the Bank of, Le Bank of England data is the no additional action scenario. And this is whereby, as it sounds, there isn't much change to policy compared to what we currently have. And so you end up with a relatively low and largely inefficient and effective carbon tax. And so the impact of that is a high degree of warming by the end of the century and actually as high as 4.1 degrees above pre-industrial levels. And under a 4.1 degree world, you're looking at systematic changes to the world environment, including rising sea levels and more frequent and more severe catastrophic climate events. Now, the reason I've separated out the far too little too late scenario is that this is a scenario that was developed by Barnett Waddingham. And the reason we've developed this scenario is because one of the key criticisms of the Bank of England data is that effectively it doesn't go far enough and doesn't consider a worst case scenario. So what we've considered under this scenario is that both there is high transitional risk, that is there is a high carbon tax introduced, but that it doesn't actually have the intended effect and that there is still a high degree of warming by the end of the century because the uh, carbon tax was introduced far too late to actually reduce um, the level of warm warming. So we created this scenario to try and mitigate some of that concern around the scenarios not going quite far enough. Now, there are clearly a number of other drawbacks to scenario modelling beyond just what I've just described. And one of which is simply it's not complex enough. It doesn't look at the different intricacies across different asset classes and the different uh, approaches that politicians and central banks will take to try and reduce these impacts as and when they happen. So it's a bit too simplistic. But what we believe at the moment is that all scenario modelling falls under this blanket. And this is not a criticism purely left to the Bank of England data. And the climate scenario modelling in general is still very much in its infancy. And there are a lot of problems with every model. This is why we have chosen to take a more pragmatic view. So instead of looking at specifically, for instance, trying to model the impact of an asset a certain number of years down the line under a certain scenario, what we've instead done is try to illustrate the relative climate risk impact um, on a scale of zero to nine to try and give more of an illustration that can be used to understand the relative impacts of climate risk. Another criticism of the Bank of England data is that there's no base scenario. That is, there's no scenario that takes into account what is currently priced into markets. What we are use as our base scenario is the early action scenario, as we believe this is a reasonable proxy for comparing the relative impact of climate risk. And now, clearly, while this might not be a market price model, we don't feel that currently any of the models that we've looked at consider what's priced into market accurately enough to really justify completely changing the modelling process. So ultimately, by using the Bank of England data, we are taking a top down approach. That is, we're looking at the impact on countries and wider economies and then scaling this down to the impact on asset class and funds. 
But by looking at our climate risk impact score, we are also incorporating some bottom up analysis. That is, we're also considering the individual strategies of those funds to move where they are on our scale. So I hope that was informative. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact Barnet Waddingham and hopefully you'll then see the rest of the videos we produced. Thank you.